let's get this organized again. Um, my, my video is always up in that corner, so sorry about that. Uh, we're going to look at the life of Christ. Now, before we get into it, uh, if you watch the video, make a little document. And uh, the question is going to be um, looking at all the different religions we've got over the year. In what ways are the religions similar or different? And if you want to do the extension, look at founders of religions and compare those founders to Jesus. Now, um, remember, when we're looking at religions and beliefs, okay, we are looking at religions as the creation of people. I know that's going to hit some people, especially religious people, kind of hard. But if we try to argue that my religion or your religion is correct, we're going to argue. and We aren't going to agree on anything. And so we have to look at religion as a creation of people. If we look at religion or people as a creation of God, then it creates those problems. Uh, but as always, okay, I'm not going to tell you what to believe. You talk to your parents, talk to your religious leaders, or if you're not religious, talk to the people you trust, and they will help you decide what to believe. Okay, I'm not telling you what to believe. Now, life of Christ, uh, fascinating to look at. Um, when we look at the life of Christ, before we even jump into it, we have to do a quick review. Okay, the Pharisees, that those are the religious order that cooperated with Rome primarily, and the Jewish people would have had to have cooperated with Rome. Uh, if they had not cooperated, they probably would have been wiped out. Okay, the Romans were very, very um, strict in their rule. If you didn't agree with the Romans, they were going to come take you out. Now, they also believed that the Torah was, the, the, their primary religious book was the foundation of the religion, but there were prophets that came along after the Torah was written that gave them further understanding of what religion was. Sadducees, this group of priests did not believe that there was any religious text beyond the Torah. Okay, so once the Torah is written, done. The prophets don't count. Okay, the Essenes. Now back in the other Jewish lecture I gave you guys, the Essenes are the religious group that Jesus probably would have belonged to. These were not members of the, of the religious leadership. Uh, these would have been lay people. Those are people in churches that are not in that leadership role, but they are members of the church. But this lay people would have gone off and worshiped God the best way they would have seen. Sicari. Okay, now this is the Jewish ninja group. Uh, all the while that uh, Judea was under Roman control, there was there was a strong political movement to try to get rid of the Romans. Okay. Now there could be some debate. You know, the the Bible kind of diminishes. It doesn't really mention the Romans too much. Okay, they are not the central focus of the New Testament. Um, and there could be reasons for that. But the Romans are in control of Judea. And the Jews would not be able to do anything without uh, the Roman consenting or the, you know, the Jewish people just doing it. And so we have this political undertone that really isn't mentioned or the focus of the, the Bible. Um, okay, Herodian dynasty. Herod the Great. Herod the Great is the man that built the, the great temple, uh, the second temple. Okay, Solomon built the first one. Herod came along and built the, the second one. Now, he is the son of a man named Antipas. Now, Antipas was um, a friend of uh, Julius Caesar. In fact, when Julius Caesar came down through Judea, uh, Antipas helped him out and became a Roman citizen because of him. And Julius Caesar gave him that kingship of uh, Judea. Now, his son, Herod the Great, um, inherited that kingship and built the temple probably about 10 BC or so. I'd have to look and see what the actual date was. But as he aged, he became more and more unstable. And people look at him and they have different um, psychosis or things they kind of ascribe to him. But eventually uh, he hears the prophecy of these babies being born that might take over his kingdom. And so 
he goes on to, he, gets, he essentially makes a law that says all those babies have to be killed. And this fits in with that nativity story from Christmas time. Now, Agrippa, there is a king later on named Herod Agrippa. And Agrippa was actually a friend of Herod because Herod had traveled back to Rome, uh, knew Augustus, and became friends with Augustus and his friend Agrippa. And so his son down the line becomes this King Herod Agrippa that's mentioned in the Bible too. Now this is Herod's temple. Uh, this temple is the center of Jewish life. It is in Jerusalem, and this is where the, the Jews will come to present their offerings. Now again, the Jews, the priests, have to cooperate with Rome because if they don't, Rome's going to crush them. Uh, and so this temple is, in some ways, there by the approval of Romans. Okay? And uh, Herod built it with the Romans' knowledge. Now, the story of Jesus. Before we get to the story of Jesus, um, I told you a long time ago about this kid in Alexandria, born about the same time as Christ, Alexandria, Egypt, okay? Just a few hundred miles away from where Jesus would have been born. Now, this kid that was born, he, his dad was a weaver, and um, a family had discovered an abandoned child, okay? Now, when we look at the Roman daily life, uh, the Roman pattern of acknowledging your son or daughter was up to the dad. If the dad didn't pick the kid up, not that kid. And those kids might get abandoned in the street. But in Alexandria, Egypt, a child had been abandoned in the street. A wealthy family found this kid, picked him up. They could have been slavers. Maybe they wanted this kid as a slave. And they brought it to this poor family who had a son and the father was a weaver. And the mom was had a baby so she could breastfeed the baby, keep it alive. That baby that was found in the street, though, died. Okay. And it's just fascinating because this kind of gives you a flavor for what life was like in Roman times about the time of Christ. Now, when that baby died, um, they continued to raise this other son. As he grew up, the family came back to claim their child. And since their child had died, they took the baby of this Egyptian weaver and his wife. Uh, the Egyptian weaver sued to get that kid back. Eventually, he did get the kid back. Uh, and I believe that son had to petition the government to begin to begin working. Uh, Rome had tight control over them. Uh, and I think the son actually started a full-time job at age 12, 13, 14 in there because he had to make money. Now, he also had to pay taxes. And so there's a tax record. Uh, he would have to prepay uh, so much money for how much work he was going to do. Uh, I do not know if that would have been the same case as, as Jesus, but Jesus would have been in the same uh, economic group. Uh, Jesus' father was a carpenter. Now, some people think that he may not have worked with wood, but maybe with stone. And so carpenter is someone who worked with their hands, and I'm not sure exactly what uh, the history would say about it. But the life of the provinces and how the Romans governed them would have been very strict. Okay, legal courses, uh, legal courts, uh, taxations, all those things. Uh, and we'll see different stories that you are from the biblical stories. You'll see uh, these stories in the Bible. Now, when Jesus is born, we don't know precisely when he was born. Okay, most people agree that he was born between 6 BC and about 4 AD. Um, we don't know exactly. Now, when our current calendar is made with BC and AD, okay, I usually use BCE and CE, but I put this on because we're talking about Christ. But with BC and AD, this was done hundreds of years after the birth of Christ. And it was done by monks that would combine the rules of different kings. And if the king overlapped in years, it's going to be inaccurate. And so that's how we get this range about when Christ would have been born. Now, when Christ is born, Herod had heard this prophecy of this child that was born to overthrow him. I think the prophecy comes from Isaiah. And so he declares all these children to be killed. 
Now, this is not the only king who killed little kids. We saw this in Egypt uh, during the founding of, of Judaism with Moses. Um, we see it in the founding of, I think, Cyrus the Great. His father was supposed to kill him or his grandfather was going to kill him because he had a prophecy that Cyrus is going to grow up and kill him. And so what Jesus does with his family is they flee south down into Egypt. They become refugees. Now in Egypt, uh, they, they hide out for a number of years. Eventually, Jesus comes back. At about age 12, he goes to the temple. Now the temple is right there on Temple Mount in Jerusalem. Uh, currently, that is where the Dome of the Rock is. And we talked about that a little bit in Mesopotamia. And we talked about uh, Isaac and Ishmael. But he goes uh, there at age 12 and establishes himself as a scholar. Now, historically, we have the stories that were written about Jesus at a later date. But we don't have a lot of archaeological facts that we can tie to. When we get to Constantine, we'll come back and look at some of these things. And we'll look at these that are called relics. Um, that may be tied to Jesus. Uh, now, historical Jesus. The way I see Jesus is he was a peaceful protester. Now, some people in Judea at this time, you had a lot of people who were agitating, trying to get Rome knocked out. Um, you have bandits out there. You have people that are politically just saying we cannot handle the... the the Roman occupation. Now, Jesus, I, I give him that role of peace of protester, and I really look at that, um, it's called a parable, but going the extra mile. In the Roman law in Judea, Roman soldiers could make you pack their pack for a mile. Uh, now, they would travel quite rapidly, and the pack would be pretty heavy. Okay, And Jesus says, hey, uh, go the extra mile. Go further than they ask. And so that's why I give them that peaceful protest. Um, as far as I know, there wasn't a violent opposition or there wasn't, he was not preaching violence like the Sicari. Uh, now, uh, this peaceful protest, it, it's set against that violence that was Rome. Okay, again, if you crossed the Romans, they were going to crush you. Uh, crucifixion was their primary tool of uh, suppressing. Uh, revolt. When Spartacus revolted uh, with his slaves, they lined the road be between Capua and Rome with 6,000 people crucified along the road. Um, and they would leave your body up there to be pecked away by the vultures and stuff. It would not be a pretty thing to see. And so the Romans uh, ruled with a heavy hand. Now, um, Jesus when he was here, as far as I have seen, he never claimed to be establishing a new religion. Okay, the religion of Christianity is established later. And we'll look at that in the next lecture with, with uh, Paul primarily. But Paul is a convert to Christianity, and it's really through him that Christianity is defined. Uh, now, all these stories, too, about Jesus were written about 30 years after he died. Uh, Jesus and his family were probably illiterate. They probably could not read and write. Now, kind of similar, next year you guys will look at Islam, but uh, Muhammad could not read or write either. He just spoke, and people around him wrote down the Quran. Now, when Jesus spoke, uh, his followers would read or would write the words down later on, about 30 years afterwards. Now, in Judea, if you remember, about 30 to 40 years after Christ had died, uh, there was a revolution, and the followers of Christ would have been wiped out back then. And a lot of their works would have been uh, wiped out too. And so we don't have uh, certain branches of that perspective on Jesus. Uh, James, Jesus' brother, uh, led the church in Jerusalem. And once the Romans come and crush Jerusalem, all their writings are gone. Um, that we do have the Dead Sea Scrolls, and people are looking at those, but I don't know what it goes through on the life of Christ. Uh, here are my sources. Again, 
look at the founding of religions and what what are similar between religions? Do they have common themes? Do they not? Are they very different? Uh, and if you want to, go back and look and see if you can find a founder of a religion similar to Jesus or different from Jesus. It really doesn't matter much. Have a good time, and I'll talk to you guys soon. See ya.